Welcome to Wakanda. Wakanda forever. Yes, so one of the really wonderful things about the Black Panther is that it allowed us an opportunity to think about what the world would be like in Dr. Bar Barbara Love's words, without racism. What would a world without racism look like? And if we can't imagine it, we're probably not working towards it. But the Black Panther movie actually gave us a window into what Afrofuturism might look like. Not just in, in education, but in healthcare and in the workplace. So we're going to take a quick journey to a place that we recognize through the Black Panther called Wakanda. And I know this is kind of, for some people, it's going to be really, really scary, but I want you to go with me because we're going to have a great time in Wakanda. Is everybody ready to go? All right. So one of the things that we noticed in the movie Black Panther was this fictive kinship. So we didn't really know outside of the main characters who was related to whom, but if you notice some word choices that were used uh, during the movie, you notice that many of the elders were called things like auntie. Yes. So we know this fictive kinship relationship in the system of education prior to Brown versus the Board of Education, because prior to Brown versus the Board of Education, white teachers and white moms acted a lot like sisters, and when people got into those classrooms, kids got into the classrooms, they acted as though their teacher was their mother or an extension of their family. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Well, the exact same thing was true for black kids as well. When black moms dropped their black kids off at, with black teachers, Everybody was really clear that this is an extension of your family. I imagine in Wakanda, this extension also exists. I also imagine that this is a world, if we chose to, we could create right now. But in order to do that, we're going to have to use fictive kinship. Now, fictive kinship just means that I am your sister, even though we are not biologically related to one another. Everybody here has somebody who you're not biologically related to, but you feel like a sister or brother, right? Right. Okay. So in the system of education, we're going to actually employ that fictive kinship too. So that means teachers and educators and social workers will be an extension of our families. The advice that we would give children in classrooms would be very similar to the advice that we would give our own children in our own home, which means, I don't know about you guys, but my children were not allowed to fail. I would jump backflips, get tutors, tear my hair out, listen to music. Right? But this was really clear that if, because I love you, I will try to give you all the tools and resources to make you successful. Possible for every child? I think so. If you notice the people in Wakanda, everybody was pretty successful. Did you notice that? Even the very young woman was in charge of medicine. And I think that was a wonderful moment in the movie to notice. Not only was she young and an African American and brilliant beyond belief, right? She was the inventor of sneakers. What would it look like if women worked across racial lines to save our children? Now, I'm going to offer right now, we see each other, but we don't love each other. So I'm going to ask us to fall in love with each other like sisters, like kin, like mothers, like aunties, like cousins, and treat our children very similar. Oh my goodness, but then we get to word problems. So let me just tell you a quick story. Yeah. In third grade, my third grade teacher hated math. She hated math. So in third grade, we did no math. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. It was good. We did a lot of vocabulary. I learned a lot from her. And uh, back then, people still got spanked, so I avoided getting spanked. It was good. Good third grade year until I got to fourth grade. In fourth grade, I had the math capabilities of a second grader because I had skipped an entire year of doing math. So in fourth grade, I got to sit on the side with the kids that didn't know that much. I got to sit on the side with the kids that didn't know math, didn't read well. And you could probably imagine my self-esteem was pretty low. So in fourth grade, I kind of muddled through, but what I learned a lot was to be quiet and silent. That if I could just shrink just enough, I could be almost invisible. Because sometimes what girls hear in school is that good girls are quiet. 
And I hated word problems. I hated word problems. I hated word problems. I hated word problems until I got to fifth grade and met my fifth grade teacher. And then I fell in love with word problems. I would offer many of our problems today are like word problems. We actually have enough information to solve them. Sometimes we might need to ask for help from somebody else. But all the information is there, and all of the problems in word problems are solvable. What if the Wakanda that we saw in the Black Panther could be our reality today? What would it take? And I actually believe we have enough smart people to figure this out together. So my fourth grade year of being invisible went really great. And then I got to fifth grade, and this is the person I met. <laughs> Now, I know everybody here didn't have Linda Green as a fifth grade teacher, but I did. And I went in to be shrinking and super small, but fifth grade was a doozy. Fifth grade was a doozy personally. My dad had gone around my house and had done the white glove test to my mother, which, yes, I know that sounds crazy, because it was. He went around and he looked for dust, and then he had a conversation with my mom about how she needed to work less in the workplace and stay at home more with her kids. So in fifth grade, a lot of things happened. In fifth grade, my mom left my dad after doing the white glove test. <laughs> now, it was the first time I'd ever seen my father cry. And let me be very clear with you, my father cried every single day my mother was gone. Every day. He loved her more than words could say. And he also loved this song. One in a million, because he sang it every single day. I was a lonely man with empty arms to fill, and he'd start crying. After about three weeks and some negotiation from my mother, my father started doing housework, and my mother returned. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda Green not only looked at that story, but Linda Green was good at math. She was also the kind of teacher we would want in Wakanda. She was very clear as a short but six inch high heel teacher, because she wore six inches every single day to school to teach us in. She was funny, she was creative. She was all of those things in fifth grade. And she was brilliant at math. And she assured me after being Jewish in our district that in order to navigate the system we call education, I was also going to have to be very good in math. And she was clear to say to a 10-year-old who was trying to shrink, you will have to show up in ways that are different from your counterparts. You, Amy, will have to get good at math. And if you are good at math, it is one of those things that no one can take away or challenge. And she worked with me. She worked with me so well that in college, I ended up majoring in mathematics. And like the rumors are, if you're good at math, people think you're smart. So my self-esteem also increased. So we have to have deliberate conversations about race and racism in the system of education. And we need more teachers like Linda Green. That wasn't the only thing that she embodied, though, that helped with my fifth grade year. The other part that she embodied with my fifth grade year was the fictive kinship part. A teacher that had no children of her own, she treated every child in the classroom as if they were her own. The standards were incredibly high, and we met them, and she loved us, and we loved her back. More importantly, she decided in my fifth grade year to have a musical. Yes, for the shrinking child in fifth grade who just wanted to disappear, now you're a fifth grade teacher who is Jewish and wears an afro and six inch heels every day, has decided to do Free to Be You and Me. Yeah, it was the 80s. And I decided I wasn't going to take a part because I didn't, you know, I was trying to shrink. But like a good teacher, she had dissected all of the parts so that each child would have a part. So because I didn't volunteer, I got the only part that was left, which was a solo. So in fifth grade, I sang my first solo, William Wants a Doll. William Wants a Doll. Yep, I belted it out in fifth grade. 
Because in fifth grade, not only did I find my courage and my confidence with Linda Green, I found my voice. This same teacher would come to my house after my father died. Now, remember she was a Jewish woman, but she brought corned beef and cabbage <laughs> to the African-American family. <laughs> but she came to my house when he died because she was so tethered and tied to our family that she understood a loss of a life at 50 years of age was much too soon. She wasn't afraid to have relationships, not surface relationships, but deep committed relationships with her students, so much so that any loss that they might feel, even 20 years later, would impact her as well. And she showed up. I would imagine in Wakanda, teachers will be brave and, and risk the vulnerability of being attached to students and fighting for them and loving them as if they are their own. Because when you mess with one of my kids, you see the bear in me. And when one of us tried to shrink, we saw the bear in her. And that made us all better. One of the blessings, um, being a U City graduate, is that the jazz program when I was in high school was amazing, amazing. My counterparts in high school actually went to France. That's how good the jazz was. That our high school students actually went to France to do jazz. One of the things that I noticed, not just in Wakanda, but here in University City School District, here in Linda Green's fifth grade class, is that she treated every student as if they were a musical instrument in a jazz band. That they were each clarinet, sounded like clarinet, so she wasn't asking clarinets to sound like flutes. And saxophones were sounding like saxophones, so she wasn't asking them to sound like drums. What if, in a world without racism, in a world like Wakanda, we treated every student as if not only are they born brilliant, but they are born to play the musical instrument and the gift that they have been given. What if then we all celebrate the jazz, the music, and the beauty that students can hold? I'm ready to form that world of jazz. Are you ready to have it with me?